Hi students, in this video, we are going to discuss the topic of inventory, inventory fundamentals. So let us first define the inventory. Any item which we are keeping in the business for selling purpose, we define as inventory. It's actually the total of tangible personal property held for sale in the ordinary course of business. It can be in different forms, like if it's a trading business, it will be only finished goods inventory. But if it's a manufacturing business, we will have three kinds of inventory, raw material, work in process, and finished goods inventory. So business to business, it can vary. So these are actually those items which we held in the business for reselling purpose, we define as inventory. Students, business to business situation can change. Like I give you the example for a car showroom. If they are buying the car, so for them, it's actually the inventory because they are buying for reselling purpose. But if the same cars buying by the rent a car company, for them, this will be considered as fixed assets because these cars are going to support them to run their operations. They are not buying for reselling purpose. So the purpose of usage will define something as inventory. How we are classifying inventories in financial statements, we are showing as current assets in the financial statements. Uh, here he is explaining you about the inventory of retailer. Like for retailer, we are having only one kind of inventory, finished goods inventory. And for manufacturer, we will have three kinds of inventory as I explained you earlier. Now students, just after explaining the term of inventory, we have to understand the cost of inventory. What will be the cost of inventory for a retailer or for a trading company? For a trading company, the cost of inventory will consist of the total cost which we incurred to bring the items till warehouse. Like we paid to the supplier, we paid any kind of taxes which are not claimable, we paid any kind of import duties, we paid any kind of handling charges, insurance, freight. The cost which is directly attributable for the acquisition of finished goods or materials, that will be the cost of inventory. Correct? So this is specifically related to the finished goods inventory, like we are the importer of finished goods, we import the items and we sell as it is. But the same thing will apply to the materials as well, say the raw material which we are using for production that is not locally available. Say if we are importing the raw material, whatever the related cost we incurred to import the raw material, it will be the overall cost for raw material, like if we paid any freight, uh, custom duty, any kind of other non-refundable taxes if we paid, all will be the uh, all will be the part of our uh, raw material inventory cost. Further, we go to cost of goods manufactured inventories. Like, if we are producing something, what will be the cost of those items? So uh, for that purpose, you definitely need to view the previous video which we discussed for cost of goods sold. So in cost of goods sold, we are discussing how to calculate the cost of goods manufactured. So let me explain you the formula quickly here as well. Here you have direct material. Consume in this one, you add direct labor. Further, you add manufacturing overhead. The time you add these three elements, you have the total manufacturing cost. In total manufacturing costs, you have to adjust work in process inventories. Work in process opening inventory we add and the closing inventory of work in process we subtract. Like that students, we get the cost of goods manufactured. Work in process inventory is how we define partly completed goods. Say we are the manufacturer of furniture say at the end of the month structures are ready but not yet polished so this can be one of the example for work in process inventory let's move for the next step 
just after this one starts we have inventory accounting systems like how we record it in the book so here we have two system first one we call perpetual inventory system what we do in perpetual inventory system we update our inventory accounts after each purchase or sale like whenever you will receive the new stock immediately we are updating our inventory accounts updating mean we immediately record in the books we update the stock immediately we don't wait for specific period of time and whenever we sell something immediately we remove it from our stock I mean from the books of accounts we immediately remove so whenever we update our stock after each issuance or receipt of stock this kind of system we define as perpetual inventory system so this kind of system is suitable for those industries who are dealing with expensive items or heterogeneous items and they need the continuous monitoring of inventory and cost of goods sold with this system you will always have the updated figure of inventory like how much stock you have on hand which can further help you to know that how much stock you need to order further on top of that you always remain aware about your cost of goods sold because uh, you know the normal entry for the sales whenever we sell something this is the entry account receivable debit and sale credit this is the entry to record the revenue and the second entry which system is recording cost of goods sold debit and inventory credit so as inventory we are continuously updating so as a result of that cost of goods sold also keep on recording on continuous basis as per this system purchases and other items related to inventory costing charge directly to inventory everything we record under one head of inventory and inventory and cost of goods sold occur whenever we make the sales as a result of this entry cost of goods sold debit and inventory credit so earlier i explained you what's the advantage you always remain aware how much stock we have and how much cost of goods sold we have incurred till now so it remains update to us uh, how much stock we need to order for the future disadvantage I mean overall disadvantage we don't have the main disadvantage only about the spending of resources I mean to say you have to spend the money on a sophisticated software and you also need one person who will be recording all these entries by time to time so if we just talk about the disadvantage the only thing additional resources you have to spend but there is a long list of advantages especially you know if you are in a food business or some other business you know that additional working capital you don't want to stuck up in inventory so just to keep your working capital to the minimum level you want to remain i uh, mean you always want to know that how much stock you have in hand so it can be very helpful for us in the cn making that was perpetual inventory system i hope that this is fully clear for you next we have periodic inventory system the word periodic very much important for us mean to say here we will update the stock after specific period of time I mean uh, we what we were doing in perpetual inventory system we were updating the record after each issuance and receipt while here we are not doing after each issuance and receipt here we have specific time that time can be one month that can be three months six months or even one year as well it depends upon the organization policy which policy they are going to implement so in this method what we do after a specific period of time we count the stock and whatever the stock we don't have all the stock we we assume as sold or consumed i give you the examples friends here say you are having the opening stock of 100 units say during the period here a later i'll explain you everything we record under one temporary account 
uh, under the name of purchases say purchases you did 1000 so total 1100 when we counted the stock closing stock students we just got 300 so remaining this is the closing stock so remaining 800 will be considered as sold so the cost of 800 units we will consider as cost of goods sold simply you can say that whatever the stock we did not find during the stock count all will be considered as consumed or sold so definitely it's not good system for the tracing of items and you are not aware about cost of goods sold all the period you will only come to know after specific period of time when we just count the stock. But the good thing here, bookkeeping is very simple as compared to perpetual inventory system. So usually small business who cannot afford the continuous updation of inventory accounts, they are the one who will be more comfortable with this system. Goods bought from suppliers and other items related to inventory costs are tracking are tracked during the period in a separate temporary account. So here everything we record in purchases and these purchases we close at the end of the period. The beginning inventory balance remains unchanged throughout the period until we count the stock and make the adjustment. And changes in inventory and cost of goods sold are recorded only at the end of the period on the basis of physical count when actually we perform the physical count only at that time we can record the cost of goods sold and we can adjust the opening stock so here we have one example through this example we can make our concepts fully clear about the recording as per perpetual inventory system and as per periodic inventory system Entity A's Gen 1 Year 1 inventory consists of 1,000 units with a cost of $5 per unit. The following are Entity A's Year 2 transactions. April 1 sold 600 un inventory units for $4,800 in cash. May 1 purchased 250 inventory units for $5 in cash per unit. The year end result of the physical count was 650 inventory units. The following are entity A's journal entries under the perpetual and periodic inventory system. So we'll go through um, both systems, how they are recording the inventory in the books. See the first entry for the sale, cash debit and sales credit assumes that it's a cash sales. In both of the systems, sales entry not going to change, but here cost of goods sold debit and inventory credit because, because as per perpetual inventory system, we are updating the stock after each issuance and receipt. This is the reason you are passing this, this entry while here. No, this no entry we are passing for the recording of cost of goods sold. Here, when we buy the stock, new stock we bought as per this transaction, inventory debit and cash credit. While as per periodic inventory system, everything we record under one temporary account, we call it as purchases. Now here, when we are closing the period, we will count the stock and as per stock count, we will actually pass the closing entries in periodic system. So let me show you the calculations here. See here, we were having opening units, how much? 1,000. 1000 into 5 the opening stock we were having 5000 uh here how much we bought additional 250 into 5 so this is over purchase 1250 we did the purchase students total quantity we were having how much we were having the total quantity six to five zero correct and out of that when we did the stock count we got 650 units so if we calculate the value 650 into 5 you will have the closing stock value 
थ्री टू फाइव जीरो दिस मच टोटल अवेलेबल स्टॉक यू आर हैविंग सिक्स टू फाइव जीरो आउट ऑफ डैट से आउट ऑफ सिक्स टू फाइव जीरो इफ यू सब्ट्रैक्ट थ्री टू फाइव जीरो यू गेट द कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड इन सम हाउ ही इज अप्लाइंग द सेम फॉर्मूला ओपनिंग स्टॉक प्लस परचेज इज माइनस क्लोजिंग स्टॉक वी गेट द कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड सो कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड वी गॉट हेयर थ्री थाउजेंड स्टूडेंट्स हेयर द फिजिकल काउंट विच यू डिड एज क्लोजिंग स्टॉक यू गिव द डेबिट टू क्लोजिंग स्टॉक कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड कमिंग एज ए बैलेंसिंग फिगर द वे वी कैलकुलेटेड हेयर beginning of entry we are giving the credit as a closing entry just to close the books and purchase is also we are giving the credit just to close the books and how we calculate the cost of goods sold in perpetual system we apply the same formula beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory we get the cost of goods sold All right, students. That's all about the inventory fundamentals and inventory accounting system. I hope that you will find this video useful for your studies. Thank you very much.